And now, welcome everybody to now part two of Rhaenyra Targaryen character analysis, and this is all from episode six to episode ten. So let's start off with episode six and what Rhaenyra has been up to for the last ten years. There is officially a ten-year time jump, and so young Rhaenyra is now gone. Now we get an older, somewhat wiser Rhaenyra. What has she done in throughout this ten years? The beginning of the episode opens up with Rhaenyra giving birth. She's having her third child. Problem is, though, this third child is like her last two. They're not from her husband. Rhaenyra and Lenor have not had legitimate kids. They are not black, they're not mixed, and they don't have white hair. And it doesn't help that the person she is having a new lover with is the Hand of the King's son. Rhaenyra Targaryen, in my personal opinion, has not learned anything in order to be a good ruler. And if the people were wondering in Westeros, hey, all those rumors about her sleeping around, that's false, that's fake. It's not like she would do that. It's not like, okay, she danced in front of her uncle, in front of her in-laws. Yeah, that, that may be a mistake, but I'm pretty sure she'll grow up. Turns out she absolutely did not. Uh, one, each kid is a bastard. And the thing is, though, she's not putting a bastard on the Iron Drone. She's breaking one tradition after another. She's done it three times. She has disrespected her father. She's disrespecting the Valarian house. She's alienating her allies. This is a tremendous, a tremendous uh, bad look for Rhaenyra. And not to mention, she's uh, she's also endangering not only herself, but her each one of her kids. She's endangering, endangering each one of her kids and her new lover at the same time. Rhaenyra also throughout this episode is trying to defend uh, this uh, this uh, giant mistake that she has made. She forces Lainor to stay with her in King's Landing. She and also at the end of this episode, she has to leave King's Landing, the position of power. She's been there for ten years, and she must now leave because she feels like her and her family are no longer safe due to the repercussions of what she has done. And I know some fans will want to say, well, maybe Allison and other lords should mind their own business. The problem is, though, if Rhaenyra, let's just say, did not want the drone anymore, she just wanted to live her own normal life and have a nice sunny area to raise her children, she could have done that. She could have said, I don't want the drone. I just want to raise my children. But no, Rhaenyra, in a sense of, you could call it greed or having her cake and want to eat it too, Rhaenyra wants the Iron Drone. She wants to be the queen of the... Uh, uh, Iron. She wants to be the queen of the Iron Throne. She wants to rule Westeros, but yes, she wants to have kids, no matter what she and she doesn't want people to question her legitimacy of her children. She wants to have her cake and eat it too. And the thing is, though, she cannot stop the gossiping of the entire House of Westeros of the entire continent about speaking about her and her legitimacy of her children. This is a big mistake for Rhaenyra. This is the biggest mistake Rhaenyra will ever do in the House of the Dragon. And the thing is also, Rhaenyra is, starts to, like, she said, tries to make a marriage proposal between her and Allison's children. And some fans want to say that this is a great marriage proposal. In all reality, it's a desperate one. Everyone seems to forget the last scene that happened was her lover got caught, in the, got caught right dead-handed defending her and her children's honor and made it very public that her made it very public that his kids are his kids and that he's the father of Rhaenyra's children, which is a big catastrophe. Rhaenyra only offers his marriage to Alicent in order to secure her son's claim and to make strengthen the claim of her son. She does not do this to ease tensions for Alicent. She does not do that to make an apology to anything she has done. No, she, Rhaenyra, is being a selfish, greedy uh, ruler like anybody else in here. She has her own ambition like everybody else, like Allison, like Otto, like uh, Damon. She has her own ambition, and her ambition is to get her son on the Iron Throne and to make his claim more legitimate. The thing is, though, her son has to go to her. Uh, her son even questions if he's a bastard, and Rhaenyra has to reassure her own son that he's a Targaryen. That's all that matters. She has screwed up so much that even her own children realize they are bastards. This is a tremendous bad look for Rhaenyra. And at the end of the day, she loses her lover. She loses uh, uh, Harwin. She loses a signal of strength within her family. She loses the hand of the king, her father, technically a father-in-law to her, who is protecting her and her children. 
The only person that Rhaenyra has not to protect her is her father, who doesn't discipline her in no uh, sense of form. So, I am sympathetic towards Rhaenyra. I do feel bad for her, but it's hard to feel bad for somebody who constantly shoots himself in the own foot. People seem to forget to realize that, hey, the major issue uh, is not just that people are going against Rhaenyra, that she, Rhaenyra has given her uh, enemies the ammo. She's given them the power to shoot her. Uh, to eventually go against her. The thing is, though, she, she doesn't help herself. She literally shoots herself in her own foot. Her enemies will always be around, but they will never capitalize on her weaknesses unless she appears to be weak or she does stupid stuff. And that's the problem with Rhaenyra. Rhaenyra has shown in episode 6, throughout those 10-year time jumps, that she is not an irresponsible ruler. And now she's not only endangered herself, but she endangered her lover and her kids, all for the power of the greed of wanting the Iron Throne. And in episode 7, the Driftmar funeral has happened. Laenor Valarian's sister is now dead. Daemon Targaryen's wife is now dead. Rhaenyra decides to go to Driftmark along with the rest of the royal family, with Alicent and her kids, with Viserys, with her father. She's going there to, make, to give her condolences to her uncle. And at the same time, they bond, they have a conversation about each other's marriage, and she sleeps with him. Call it grief, uh, uh, call it grief sex, whatever you want to call it. She sleeps with her uncle officially in this episode. And the problem is, though, she does this in the, in the entire area of where her in-laws are. So, not the very, the best look for Rhaenyra right then and there. But then again, a lot of things are going to go worse to worse for her. Also, in this episode at the beginning, she has to tell her son, Jace, that the Valarians are her family, and he wants to go uh, to like uh, Sir Harwin Strong's funeral. She, he believes they should be with the Strongs instead of the uh, Valarians, since they are not his real blood. And the things over near has to remind her son in public. She looks around when uh, Jaehaerys speaks. She has to reassure him that the Valarians are our family. The Strongs are not. And again, she put her children in a position where it is indefensible. And then later on. She has to defend her children in front of her father, in front of Alice, and in front of everybody. When Aemon Targaryen uh, gets Vagar, and when he is uh, damaged by Luke, and he has officially lost an eye, the kids have to make a defense as to why it happened. And the reason why it happened was because Aemon called them bastards. And Rhaenyra has to make this decision now, in this moment, to defend her kids at all costs. She is a mother that it will do everything to protect her children, and she asks for Aemon to be sharply questioned. In other word terms, some people want to say this is a torture word, uh, that she wants her younger brother to be tortured or to be at least sharply questioned as to where he heard such slanders. Because anybody who dares speak about Rhaenyra's true heritage of her kids will now question the reality of who Rhaenyra is. And in doing so, her father, the king, stands with her, protects her, and makes a law that says anyone who dares speaks about the legitimacy of Rhaenyra's kids will have their tongue removed. So now her so now she put her father in another position where he has to now defend her at all costs for all the mistakes she has made. And now he has made an official law that condemns anyone to speak the truth about it. And even though everyone can clearly see what is the truth, Rhaenyra has now officially doubled down on the lie, and now there's even a law to c condemn people with uh, losing their tongue, ability to speak forever, because they spoke bad about the heir. Now, another thing will happen since Allison finds this is insufficient, she decides to want an eye for an eye. She's tired of Rhaenyra's uh, uh, getting away with everything. She's tired of uh, her son's... Uh, being at risk to Rhaenyra and to her kids, as she says to Rhaenyra when she charges at Rhaenyra to get at Luke and to take his eye, Rhaenyra defends her child. She must have no choice but to defend her kid. And in doing so in this entire episode, I kind of don't feel bad for Rhaenyra. I kind of don't. Again, she's put her kids in this position in the first place. Her kids are in a position where they are looked at that look less upon because of her life choices. She made the choice to have them. She made the choice to raise them. And she was made the choice to continue being his heir. And again, she could have her father could legitimize them. She could have gone more 
and to like, hey, maybe I don't want to iron drone. Maybe I could just uh, leave this and I could raise my kids how I want to be. And they are going to be the strongs and all that stuff. She could have done so many more options. But since she wants to have her cake and eat it too, I know a lot of people feel sympathetic for her, for her kids. But I really just don't feel sympathetic for her at all. And at the end of the day, she alienates herself even more. She has a heart-to-heart -heart with Harwin about, uh, not Harwin, with Lenor about their relationship, about their marriage. And all to the end of the day, she realizes she can't do anything and she needs someone that's strong politically and powerful. She marries Damon. She, uh, and uh, her Damon fake Lenor's death. And doing so in this entire situation, she has gone from the Snow White Princess to the Evil Queen. She has now alienated herself from House Valarian. Uh, her in-laws think that she has killed her uh, her uh, son. Uh, her in-laws think that she has killed her husband, their only son, uh, the Sea Snake and Rhaenys. She has alienated the house that she's been aligned with for so long. She's married a man uh, who is rumored to kill his first wife, and so and Rhaenys even blames him for the death of his sec the second wife, which was not his fault. But Rhaenyra has now proven to everyone, and she says this in the entire episode. That people whisper it was us who killed him. People whisper us that I am responsible. So in other terms, you are not making people see you as a loving mother, a good ruler. You're showing everybody in the house of Westeros that you are irresponsible for one for having the kids. And not to mention that the fact is you're marrying a, a, high, a very suspicious murderer and your uncle. And you merely marry him right after the death of your first husband. She's not proven to the people to the realm that she's a loving person, that Snow White figure. She's proven to people that she is a murderess. And us, the audience, we know the truth that she didn't kill her husband, but it still doesn't change the fact that now she's endangered, at, again, not only herself, her kids and all that stuff, but now she's even ruined her reputation even worse. So, so we're near Targaryen for episode 8. I am sympathetic towards her, and again, but I cannot feel so sorry for someone who is constantly shooting themselves in the foot to get more power. Episode 8 has now rolled around the corner, and now six years have passed for the entire timeline. Six years, Rhaenyra has not been at court. She's not been at King's Landing. She has not seen her sick father in over six years. She has been a, a heir in exile on Dragonstone. She has now alienated, she has alienated most of all her allies. The only ally she has right now is Damon. And the thing is, though, she, even though she's a good mother and her raising her children in a proper way, she has done a lot of bad stuff in the political department. And the thing is, though, since she's supposed to run this kingdom, she has no political backing. She has allowed the High Towers to take over King's Landing itself. She, when she gets to King's Landing, she even questions the High Towers of overdrugging her father in order to take control of the House of Westeros. The thing is, though, she has no right to say this to Alicent or to anybody else in the kingdom because the fact is she is not there. She is not there helping her father manage the kingdom. She's not there governing the laws to fight the high towers for inheritance. She has done nothing. I can understand that after the events of the Eye for an Eye in Episode 7 that she needs to take two years out, but she should have come back with Damon. She, they have no right to deny her a seat at the King's Landing to take control. And with Damon around, things would have changed. But she remains an heir in exile. And she does not see her father. She doesn't see his conditioning worsening. She does not uh, do anything. It's the only reason why Rhaenyra comes back to King's Landing is not to see her father. It's not to uh, strengthen her claim. It's because it's when she, her claim is now being threatened. Her son's Luke inheritance for Driftmark is now being questioned by Bayman, and Bayman is questioning the legitimacy of Rhaenyra's children. And since he's questioning her, it, it busts out of her own claim. This weakens her claim, and she only goes to King's Landing at the last-ditch effort in order to protect her son. And the thing is, though, she makes a last-minute alliance with Rhaenys. She could have married Le Luke off to Driftmark a long time ago with Rhaenys's grandchildren. But the thing is, though, don't forget, Rhaenys and Corlys of Valarian believe that Rhaenyra killed uh, their children. So in all actuality, Rhaenyra has alienated herself so badly she makes another last-ditch effort with Rhaenys Targaryen. And one more uh, uh, last-ditch effort of a marriage proposal. 
She has to go back running to her crippled, demented father who is on his near deathbed in order to protect her. Rhaenyra has done nothing in the uh, in those six years to, to build any alliances to form any strength for herself. And she has proven herself when she's crying to her father on his near deathbed in order to protect her in court and her responsibility to being heir is too much. The thing is, though, she did not help herself. Again, Rhaenyra likes to shoot herself in the foot. And at the end of the day... Her father protects her and defends her, and she makes a toast with Alicent to clear the air, and it looks like her and Alicent will make up. But other than that, Rhaenyra, for the most part, in episode 1 and episode 8, she has done absolutely nothing to give any strength to her cause, and the only good thing she does is she makes peace with Alicent. But in future episodes, in episode 10, we can see where that's going to lead to so many destructive moments. So in episode 8, Rhaenyra still is an incompetent ruler, still is uh, hiding behind her father to protect her at all costs, and uh, again, she says the strength of the iron, like the rule to own Westeros, to, uh, to even have a claim to the Iron Throne is just too much to bear. Well, maybe it wouldn't be too much to bear if she didn't make constant mistakes. But that is the end for episode 8. We'll now do episode 10. In episode 10, all hell breaks loose for an air Targaryen. One, she finds out her father's dead. Two, she finds out the Greens have now taken over the Iron Throne. Three, she loses her child during her pregnancy, a deformed child. So you could take that with stress. Maybe you could say the reason why it was deformed because of the whole, you know, incest stuff. You might get some deformed uh, freaking uh, kids. But the thing is, though, Rhaenyra lost a lot during this entire episode. She loses the throne, she loses her father, and she loses an unborn child, which I believe was a daughter. Very sympathetic her and the thing is though she is also crowned by Daemon Targaryen and a, a, I'm not sure what member of the King's Guard is Eric or Eric the two worst names in <laughs> Game of Thrones history and the thing is though she is now knighted she has her own allies and in doing so this was probably the most episode that I respect the Rhaenyra Targaryen in the sense that she was not ready to go to war she was willing to bend the knee to Aegon Targaryen she was willing uh, to in a sense, stop this war from ever happening. She did not want this war to continue. She did not, or not to continue, she did not want this war to start, and she did not want her to be the first person to do it. She did not want to enact this war. She did not want to start this war. And I really feel sympathy for her near. This was her showing the true leadership that she's never shown before. This was showing a true queen in the darkest and most uh, heartbreaking moments of her life. She is stepping up as a leader. The thing is, though, she is being questioned by her leadership by her own husband, Daemon Targaryen. And he also put his hands on her. Now, I understand why he's upset. The Greens have taken over control. But I do not, just because it's understandable why Daemon's upset does not mean you put your hands on a woman who just lost a child. I mean, he lost a child too, but she's the one who gave birth to the child and she's the one who lost it. This is her drone. She, he also undermines her military-wise because, you know, he is the military leader and he's the person who's going to make all the decisions for this entire war. He kind of contradicts her in front of her entire uh, council, which is not a good thing. And Rhaenyra, at this point, when Damon chokes her, maybe she could start to realize, hey, maybe my uncle, my husband, even though he's by my side, Let's just say he has a temper and he's not above killing anybody else in it, In this case. She's really got to see Daemon Targaryen for who he is in some cases. Yes, he lost Viserys. Yes, he loved his brother. Yes, he loves Rhaenyra. But Daemon Targaryen is Daemon Targaryen. He has his own temper. I was not surprised when he was choking her. I'm not surprised that uh, it happened at all. I am honestly was very surprised at how Rhaenyra was handling this confrontation. The thing is, though, there's still a lot of problems with Rhaenyra Targaryen that she has, in a sense. She still is, as you see, as a leader, people are looking to Daemon for the military-wise. They're not looking to Rhaenyra. Where Rhaenyra as the backs up her or says anything to Daemon, he contradicts her in front of other lords. She decides to have a private conversation with him. They're not showing a united front whatsoever as any of the leaders. And the thing is, though, she also says, before I even go to war... Uh, like, I should know, like to know who allies are siding with me. The thing is, though, she should be knowing that already of what allies she's supposed to have. And the thing is, though, she just sends her children to the Vale, Jace to the Vale and Winterfell, and Luke uh, to uh, the Baratheons. And the thing is, though, she 
doesn't offer anything. She just says we need to remind people of her oaths. She doesn't offer nothing in marriages to her other children. She offers no lands, entitlement, nothing. Because Rhaenyra does, just expects the drone to be given to her. She expects lords to, uh, to accept the truth uh, that she is the heir to the Iron Throne. While she is the heir and she was named by the king, she had not done nothing in the 16 years to gather any allies. And she just expected uh, the Baratheons uh, to just uh, uh, fall on her knees and to, uh, to fight for her and to die for her. And the thing is, so because of this, Rhaenyra is, I won't say she's at fault for uh, sending her sons to her death, but she sends her sons and put them in a situation where they cannot even adapt to this. She sends her sons, again, as uh, Boris Baratheon says, so you come with empty hands. She comes with nothing. She comes with no security. She comes with no ability to negotiate. And in doing so, she, uh, she learned this from her father. She just sticked her head in the sand and thought it could go away. And in episode 10, Rhaenyra has proven in some cases why she could be a great leader but why she is a very flawed leader. And so everybody, this concludes my Rhaenyra Targaryen... And so everybody, that concludes my Rhaenyra Targaryen character analysis. And here's the thing, there's a young Rhaenyra and there is the older Rhaenyra. What I find from the uh, young Rhaenyra is that she is a ventress, she's daring, she's a bit spoiled, she's also a bit detached uh, to the people around her, and she's politically inept. And the thing is though, when she's older, Certain things change, certain things do not change. One, she is still a loving, uh, she is now a loving mother. She's a more inadequate leader. She is detached literally from King's Landing and from the seat of power itself. And the thing is, though, she's still politically inept. I say I, uh, older Rhaenyra is a much wiser Rhaenyra, but she still makes constant mistakes. I'm pretty sure that Rhaenyra is a good person. She's a good character. But the thing is, though, as a political leader, she is absolutely terrible. The only other person terrible than her is possibly a Aegon, but that we don't really know much about how he would govern. He's a drunkard. He'll probably leave everything of his business to everybody else, and there ain't going to be much about him. But with Rhaenyra herself, she just becomes an inadequate leader. She doesn't show strength in any way, and the only reason why she's heir to the Iron Throne is because her father named her heir. And the thing is, though, for being the first female heir ever to inherit the Iron Drone, I expected more from her character. I expected more better politically. I expected her to get more attention to herself. I expected her to get positive impact. The thing is, though, you have to look at what the entire realm thinks of her. As a young as a young princess, she was the realm's delight. She was Snow White. She was, uh, she was beautiful. People loved her. There was some little bit scandals about who, how many people she slept with, was sleeping with her uncle. The thing is, though, she uh, had did no favors with how she uh, handled herself and certain other lords when it was the marriage proposals, when she was choosing Chris and Cole as the king's guard. She wasn't proving to people that she was politically uh, a savvy girl. She, she was just a typical teenager. That's what they saw in her, and they saw she was irresponsible. And then later, she, she, they still see her as a princess, but now that she has kids, they show she's not even having legitimate heirs. She's showing she's irresponsible. With having the Iron Throne. What also they see. Oh that her, that her husband died. But everybody's question is that it was her. If her own in-laws question. Whether or not she killed her first husband. Then what's going to change the fact that other people. Not to mention she's an heir in exile. She doesn't uh, spend any time with her father. She's six years. No one has seen about her. No one has heard about her. Because she's living on Dragonstone. Just being herself. And just raising her children. The thing is though. What do people think about her? She's inadequate. She's not politically moti motivated. She's just there on Dragonstone uh, raising her children, which is all good and true. But everyone knows that she's claiming her children as legitimate heirs, which they're not. We all know Bayman Valarin was killed because uh, she called those her children bastards for saying the truth. We all know the king made a law that stated anybody who dared question legitimacy of her children would have their tongues removed. Do not, they do no longer see her as the princess, as the realm's delight. They now probably see her as the evil queen from Snow White. And a lot of this is Rhaenyra just shooting herself in her own foot. To me, I like Rhaenyra Targaryen. I think she's an interesting character. I sometimes enjoy her character. I especially enjoyed her in episode 10 when she was really making the true leadership material after the loss of her child and her father and of her drone. 
So overall, I do enjoy Rhaenyra Targaryen, but to me, she's a deeply flawed character, and I, you don't know me, I'm more of a team green, just because I like the fact that the greens actually fight for uh, their stuff, they're actually building up their alliances, they are actually building up every single thing of their power. They were not given power, they t took power, but also they build up their power. Rhaenyra has not built any power whatsoever, and she would constantly rely on others, like her husband Damon, in order to help her to have any satisfaction in order to control the kingdom. And the thing is, though, she needs help constantly. Again, if you need 16 years to go back to your father in order to help you to secure the Iron Throne, then maybe you're not the ruler that you're meant to be. Maybe you're not meant to be queen. Maybe you're not meant to rule over the Seven Kingdoms. But that's my personal opinion of Rhaenyra. What would you all think, everybody, of this entire video? Thanks for listening. Right, for everybody, uh, bye.